that, that what you're describing is the first iteration of sort of AR, really, you know, augmented reality. It's, hey, I take a picture of this and I put it, you know, against this other thing. And then I sort of get some inspiration or knowledge. Yeah. And then that helps me form a buying decision. You know, fast forward, when was that? 2000? This is 2010, literally. Yeah, 2010. 2010. So here we're here in 21 and we haven't seen AR truly become something that's going to be used at scale. But that's coming, right? Like. Yeah. The first thing that you saw was uh, that Pokemon game and that was right. driving behavior and like that sort of petered off. But like you saw that inception of people interacting with their device and the real world yeah. and it actually drove, I'm, I got to go to the central park and I got to like go pick up this crazy Pokemon, you know, that's only going to be there for the next like three minutes. Yeah. Right. The significance was there. The significance was there. Yeah. And people the were behavior, changing their data plans. They remember the, that? But the yeah. behavior, <laughs> the behavior was there. Yeah. And so you know that that exists. A lot of so much of the stuff that's successful has been in some iteration previously, but just not quite at the right time with quite the right experience, consumer experience. And I think that that's the fundamental takeaway. And so you were 2010. If you started that today with the existing cameras in the device, the processing power of the device, and maybe it's not bow ties, it's something more substantial, and you launch that in market, boom, you have your, you know, your next unicorn startup. And so it's that, you think that so? insight, <laughs> go back. Uh, we go but back? again, yeah. it's, it's, Different it's the insight the of, I think the, the key is, is the insight of, can you virtualize something that people want to compare or contrast against something in the real world? that gives you more insight or wisdom about a decision that you need to make. And that becomes the pivot point to that decision-making, right? If you were, if you were to really put it in the abstract, it doesn't need to be bow ties. It can be pretty much anything. And so it's like, okay, maybe bow ties were too niche. In the case of you know Jeff Bezos, he decided that it was starting with books. And then that became the universal marketplace. But he knew exactly when to pivot out of books and expand the marketplace. Other people probably tried to do that. You look at it as biggest competitor of Barnes and Nobles, he could, you know, that's a rounding error in his overall bank account. But they Barnes and Nobles was the dominant player. They just didn't realize how to evolve the business and what the true insight was where they were going. So I think that that is the key to success. 